to Jesus I surrender all to him I freely give I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily Jesus, I surrender. Make me Savior, holy thine. Let me feel the Holy Spirit. Truly know that thou art mine. I surrender. Jesus, I surrender. Lord, I give myself to Thee. Fill me with Thy love and power and Thy blessing for to live. I surrender. Good morning. Good morning. It's wonderful to have you here today. Um, before I forget, there are little three by five cards in the pews. And if you would please just leave your name and a way to contact you in case somebody um, comes down with COVID, we can get in touch with you and let you know that, uh, that it had happened. So far it hasn't, but we want to make sure that uh, you all are safe. Parish concerns and celebrations. Um, Edie. Today is the uh, 100th anniversary of the genocide of the Armenian people. There was over thousands of people from from Armenia and and that area, and we do have some. Armenian people within our congregation, and there's a good group. So uh, please keep them in your prayers today, as it's quite a quite a sad thing. Okay. Does anybody else have any announcements? Kathy. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I just wanted to say that we did well at the, with the hot dogs and popcorn sales yesterday. That was uh, over 800. I don't know what we started in the cash box, but it was 830 when I counted it at the end of the day. So we did really well. And we sold out all of our hot dogs by 1230. Hot dogs and popcorn, who knows? <laughs> Ruth. Ruth. Um, I want to thank everybody who helped. Keith Witcher came up and helped. Mr. Egg came and helped. And we had a um, pretty good turnout with all the, the stuff. And we got rid of the dishes. That was a good thing, right, Phil? 
And so we made like uh, $320 on the ad sale. Awesome. So, yeah, yeah. There were a number of people that volunteered for the yard sale. Um, I want to thank uh, Caleb and Josiah and Pam, um, Lori and Bob Grimaldi, Bob Johnson, Phil, Jerry, David, uh, Steffi, um, Curtis, and Bernice, and Kathy, and I'm running out of names, I'm sure there's more. Yeah, Bob and Lori Giannotti. Um, I, I used the wrong last name. Um, it, it was a hard day yesterday. <laughs> it was a great day, but it was a hard day. Uh, sorry, Bob and Lori. Um, I don't know if I missed anybody, but thank you for the donations. Thank you for the support. Um, thank you for just... Uh, allowing us to be out there, to be a part of this community. It, it helps us. We have a couple of people visiting today that met us yesterday, and it's great. It's great that we're, we're supposed to be about community. And um, not only did it help us, but it, it allowed people out there to see who we are and what we're like and how we can have fun. And Pam has something. Also say we had at least one lady say she was going to join us for church on Sunday because she was looking for a place of worship. So we thought that was better than the money that we made. Oh, good. You know. Um, so anyway, it, it just it's wonderful stuff, and um, we may be small, but we're mighty dog on it. Um, does anybody else have anything to share? Okay. I'm going to light our celebration candle uh, in gratitude for such a lovely day yesterday, for um, seeing so many people out and about, um, I, and, and being careful, wearing masks, and, and doing what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, so I'm really thrilled that, that there is that light at the end of the tunnel. It's still a ways off, but there's that light. Lord be with you. May you pass the peace by waiting. <laughs> Let us read responsibly this morning's call to worship. The Good Shepherd invites us to green pastures. We are refreshed beside still waters. When we walk through the shadowed valleys, God is with us. We are comforted and reassured. God welcomes us to the table where love is expressed. We are invited to partake of the truth God offers. As we gather together in prayer, um, I want to make you all aware that uh, Ron Marsh uh, went into the hospital this morning with a brain bleed. Um, they're waiting. Uh, I got texted by Elaine a little bit after, maybe a little bit after 8. Um, they're waiting for a room for him, and she will keep me informed as to what's going on. So um, let's please keep Ron in our thoughts and prayers today. Um, we'd like to have prayers for Mark, the Cannon family, all with COVID, three children at home, good test results for Diane, for Ruth, complete healing for Randy. Let us come together in a spirit of prayer. O oh God, our creator, 
you've called us to pray for all your people. We remember those who especially need your care. Be with those who are lonely and feel their loneliness late in the evening. Bless those who are sad and feel the absence of someone they loved and lost. Bless those who are ill and who will not find rest. Bless those who have no home, no family to call their own. God, you're everywhere. Bless this, our church, your church, and help us to remember that Jesus, with the Holy Spirit, is always with us. Loving God, we ask that you hear these, the silent words of our hearts and minds. Gracious God, as much as we had a good day yesterday, sunshine, people milling all around, thank you for this sanctuary. Thank you for this time to be able to come together and let go of ourselves and lose ourselves in your love and in the love of our brothers and sisters, all our siblings in Christ. Encourage us and inspire us through the deeds that we see in the deeds that we perform, all in your name. We pray through Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us join together in our church's mission statement. Our church exists to cultivate the love of God and our community and to build a deep conviction that we are all beloved, valued people of worth who are devoted to following Jesus and doing God's work. We welcome and seek Christ's living presence in our town and beyond. Our church is a place of worship, inspiration, learning, and discovery. We serve our community and are the arms, hands, voice of God's love. As we have come to uh, do, we will accept the offerings as you leave the sanctuary. Um, thank you. today's offering uh, prayer of thanksgiving. How can we express our thanks, O God, for the one who laid down life itself in witness to your love for all people? We are aware that many have not experienced that love. We see their need and we want to respond. Use what we offer to bring healing and peace to others not of this fold. Draw us together as one flock in the care of one shepherd, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen.
task on earth is done when by thy grace the victory's won in death's cold wave I will not flee since God through Jordan leadeth me he leadeth me he leadeth me by his own hand he The Good Shepherd Who Is Willing to Die for the Sheep. When I read those words, a couple images come to my mind. The first half of that sentence makes me think of how Jesus gathers the innocent children and blesses them. The second image I draw is pretty easy to understand. It's the image of Jesus dying on the cross. Jesus makes it clear to us that he is the good shepherd, that he will take care of the sheep, and that he will lay down his life for us. We need to remember that laying down his life was not forced upon him, but was a decision that he made on his own. He even said in verse 18, no one takes my life away from me. I give it up of my own free will. I have the right to give it up and I have the right to take it back. Jesus amazes me. You know how a lot of times our egos define us? Our egos can make us vain and sometimes stubborn. When we think about Jesus who was deemed king of kings, the one whom through all things were created, he willingly suffers ridicule, pain, and humiliation all in the hopes that you and I will see what God has planned for us. Jesus loves us in spite of our shortcomings. But this reading goes on and it goes so much deeper. I love the message in verse 16. This is where Jesus speaks of that other flock that are not in this sheep pen. He intends to bring them into the sheepfold. I must bring them too, he says. They will listen to my voice and they will become one flock. And one thing I find fascinating about much of the human race is people's insistence on how one person or race or religion is superior to another. I believe in interfaith and ecumenism. I believe that is where we see the divine is in all God's people. So if you kind of agree with me, maybe even if you don't, hear me out. Ask yourselves, who are the sheep in the fold? Who are those other sheep that are not part of this fold? What is interesting here is that those outside our fold seem to be able to hear the voice of Christ and are willing to follow, though they may differ from us. Now, in the historical context, we could believe that Jesus was talking about the Gentiles. That would be people who are not of the Jewish faith, people like you and I. Primarily, Jesus himself ministered to the Jews. However, at that, the time that John writes this gospel, the transition from a Jewish-dominated church to a Gentile-dominated church is well underway. Remember that John is believed to have written this last gospel somewhere around 90 to 100 AD. There were debates among some disciples as to how non-Jewish people could become part of the church. Funny, isn't it? how even back in those days that Jesus himself called, those disciples couldn't decide on what it took to be a part of the church. And this may seem silly to us, but for some sects, circumcision was a determining factor on whether one could be a follower of Christ. 
So when Jesus states, there are other sheep which belong to me that are not in this sheep pen, we are inclined to ask, who are they? Even today, we continue to struggle with the question of who is in and who is out. And many of us foolishly try to make that determination. Today, there are approximately 2.2 billion Christians in the world. And that's roughly one third of the world's population. What about the other two thirds? Did God create them as expendables? As insignificant? As not mattering? Surely, what some call heathens and non believers can't have access to heaven, right? After all, what kind of loving God would open the gates of heaven to non-Christians? How could God love people who fed the hungry, gave the thirsty water to drink, and clothed the naked even though they didn't know the name of Jesus? I apologize for the sarcasm, but denying God's blessings to good people who we don't feel know God as they should just seems ludicrous. And while, true, I may not fully understand the mind of God, I know Jesus tells us over and over and over again that God is a God of love. Ours is a God that instructs us to forgive 70 times, seven times. So what's God going to do with people? You can say no. It is neither your job nor mine to condemn those who we feel fell short of the will of God. We are to show love and encourage those that we might disagree with. Religion has been one of the leading divisions among people. And if you think about it, anti-Semitism was huge for a long time. And unfortunately, in many places and in some people's hearts, it still is. It doesn't matter to these anti-Semites that Jesus, his mother and father, and all the disciples were Jewish. Later, Muslims became the focus of wrong religion, thus leading to the Crusades. What has been done and is still being done in the name of religion is abhorrent to God. Jesus calls us to love our enemies, not kill them. I do not know the people who are part of this other flock that Jesus is talking about in our reading today. But I am not going to try and kick anyone out. It is up to Jesus to say who is included. The Bible tells us that it is not by our doing that we are saved, but as Paul's letter to the Ephesians tells us, that it is by grace we have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. It is not us who got ourselves there. Could it be that the other sheep included the Samaritan woman at the well whom Jesus met or the tax collector that Jesus had dinner with? How about those that didn't know Jesus as God's Messiah but only knew him as a teacher and a healer? Tell me, who are we to judge? Who are we to say that so-and-so is not going to heaven? Our minds are fixated on right and wrong and how that affects where we're going and what we're doing. Friends, it's not our jobs to determine who's in and who's out. Our job is to learn how to love. We already know how to condemn. Our job is to understand that the worst people in the world are broken, yet they bear the image of God. We are to pray for those who we feel are beyond help, because if we turn our judgments inward, if we look down and honestly at ourselves, we will understand that we too have not earned God's grace, but it has been given to us as a precious gift. We have no right to try and deny anyone of a gift that God chooses to give. We need to work on ourselves. 
better ourselves. Stop trying to take God's job. We are not that smart. As a church, we must ask ourselves, who isn't here in this sanctuary today? Do we put up any barriers that may keep people from walking through our doorway? Members of other flocks, are we willing to let them in? Are there any roadblocks we unwittingly erect that stops us from welcoming all of God's sheep? Many reasons exist for people not to come through certain doors. Have you ever thought about somebody's financial position? Geez, I don't have any money to put in the offering plate. Or, I don't have any good clothes. Can I, can I come to church if I'm not wearing a suit and tie? Of course. There are theological differences. We have folks that are more liberal, more conservative, whatever way you want to look at it. And sometimes we don't think that person doesn't fit in. Shame on us. When we think theologically, we need to understand something really important. I'll bet you in here, in this group of people, we don't all agree on every theological aspect there is. And that's okay. We're here to think, to worship, to be grateful. We're not here to condemn any one of us. <clears throat> Have you ever thought about the LGBT community? Will we ever look at those people as equal members of the church? Who is included in God's realm? When we think of others who are not the same as us, how do we proclaim Jesus and not include others that are in the body of Christ? When Jesus says that he has other sheep and he wants to bring, that he wants to bring into the fold, who are they? And are we offering an equal share of God's kingdom and God's blessings to them? By welcome the other, it doesn't mean we lose anything. God's love and blessings are for all of creation. These blessings are like a well that will never run dry. So, I have a question for you. When you hear God's voice, do you hear it audibly with your ears? Or do you sense it in your heart? Who is to say that people who have never heard or known Jesus have not heard his words. Not me. Amen. <laughs> Though I may speak with bravest fire and have the gift to
normally do. I forgot something in the uh, concerns and uh, free soup Sunday. So as you walk out, there is uh, there are bags and it's tortellini soup, chicken tortellini soup, and uh, cookies. So as you walk out, please take a uh, a lunch with you. May you all go in peace. May you find blessings in your hearts. Our service of worship has come to an end. Our service to one another now begins. Go in peace. God bless you all.